Yeah. yeah. Right. We should never sleep with full. Right. <coughs> place to be. And, uh, they gave me the faith in God's Word, the Bible. I'm telling you, that's a pretty big subject. Mm -hmm. And today, and I hope everyone will stay with me, there's, there's as much history I'm going to have today as there is Scripture. Our Bible has a lot of history. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. And I hope and pray that it's not laid aside for new history. That's right. I'm going to start with 2 Timothy 3.14. Paul right into Timothy. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. You know, Preacher Larry was talking last night. He remembers all the old people. I remember my granddad Vic sitting right there. I grew up in this in this little body. And all the people, the wonderful people, they're all gone. Now we are the old people. Mm -hmm. So we have to carry the message to them little fellas back there, and I'm just tickled to death to see a church. Right. Amen. Amen. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures and work and are able to make be wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And my text is, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doc doctrine reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That's what this Bible we have. The King James Version. Amen. Mm -hmm. that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. But we'll get instruction. This is the instruction book of life. Mm -hmm. There's instruction in here for saved people. There's instructions in here for people how to get saved. There's instructions in here for people that are going to hell. Mm -hmm. yeah. It covers everyone. It don't leave anyone out. And then 2 Peter 1, 19 says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy. For unto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. That means we don't take a verse and run with it. Uh, you know, I, I remember Preacher Larry talking about taking the Bible and just whooping someone to death with it. That's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to tell people how to get saved. That is our job. Right. For the prophecy came not in old time, but the will by the will of man. But holy man of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something that probably no one's done. I'd like you to close your Bible and lay it down beside of you and pretend you don't have a Bible. <laughs> uh, back in the olden days, in old times, the Bibles were chained to the pews. The common everyday people wasn't allowed to have a Bible. Right? <laughs> So the church that was in control could tell anyone. But I'm going to read you a little parable here. So you don't know nothing about the Bible. You're not able to read. But this can't happen. The parable of the good simpleton. The good simpleton went from Jerusalem to Jericho, and there he fell among thieves, who stripped him from his arrangement except his shoes. They hung him in a tree by his hair, and after a while, a Levite came by and passed on the other side, leaving him hanging in the tree. Then a priest came by, but also passed by on the other side of the road, leaving him hanging in the tree. Fortunately, Jehu came by driving his chariot in an insane way. Jehu, Jehu cut him down 
and the good simpleton landed on the ground, it was then, oh excuse me, it was then he heard a voice, take off the shoes for the ground you are standing on is holy ground. The good simpleton took off his shoes and now he was totally without any clothing. But the Lord blessed him, in that Naaman came by with ten, cho ten changes of raiment, raiment. Once the good simpleton was clothed again, he heard a voice say, Go and preach against the city of Nineveh. And on his way to Nineveh, his ship ran into a storm at sea. To calm the storm, the sailors cast the good simpleton overboard. The good simpleton was then swallowed by a whale. The good simpleton prayed for the Lord to rescue him. The Lord caused the whale to vomit out the good simpleton out of his belly. Fortunately, on the way, the good simpleton grabbed hold of gold coin. Then he could pay his taxes. When he arrived in Nineveh, the Queen Jezebel was standing on the balcony. It was then she was struck by a stone from a sling of the shepherd boy. It struck her in the head and she fell off the balcony. The question is now, in the afterlife, whose wife will she be? You can teach that. Yeah. And if you don't have something to reference by, you would believe it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what the people back in the day, before we're starting to get out of King James Version of the Bible, they didn't know. They were unlearned, they were not able to read. But you could preach that every day. Joseph Goebbels, which was Hitler's propaganda man, mm -hmm. said if you tell a lie long enough yep. and loud enough, That's people right. will believe it. That's true. That's true. Now that was that was something that was the Jews used. They used things that was way off course to teach people. It, it, uh, exaggeration, if you will. You won't find that in the Bible because it's all mixed up. Mm. But if you don't have a Bible, you would never know the difference. That's right. Yeah. So now we're going to go to a little history. And I would say, why do we need a new translation? Why do we need a new Bible? Some say they can't understand it. Some say it's hard to read. <coughs> a grade school person can read the King James Version of the Bible and understand it. That's right. Mm -hmm. It wasn't broke, it don't need fixed. Amen. Amen. That's right. The only thing that I see to be changed about the Bible is the vernacular of the day. Right there lays the 1611 King James Version of the Bible. If any of you want to look at it, you're more than welcome. But all I ask is, please be careful with it. It's very expensive. But I, I wish some of you would look at it. Yes. Uh, so we have, it, and as I say, anytime you want to look at it, I'll be here today, take it up and look at it. It's got stuff in it that, that our Bible does not have, but I don't hurt our Bible. And I have found since about 13, in the 1380s, I have found 133 English versions of the Bible. And there may be more by now. There was 11 early modern English. There were 11 of them. There was indigenous English. That means it was translated into the language of the people that was here. 121 modern English. And there was four the Hebrew and English alone, there were 18 partial Bibles. But I noticed one thing as I was studying this. Out of the 133 Bibles that were translated into English, 110 of them were after 1900. Mm -hmm. Now that was, that was an amazing thing to me. But the first English translation we had was, was, was handwritten by John Wycliffe. He was the forerunner of the Protestant Reformation which happened in 1517 and they called him the Morning Star of Reformation. And I'm going to give you a little history on John Wycliffe. 
We owe this man a great debt of, of uh, thanks yeah. for what he did. John Wycliffe cared deeply about the poor and common folk and railed against the abuses of the church. The church, which was the Catholic Church. Hmm. They owned one third of the land in England. Clergy were often illiterate and immoral. High offices in the church were bought, were sold out as political plums. But problems even went deeper. Whitecliffe was a devoted student of the Bible and saw some of the doctrine of the church had departed from the biblical moorings. Go this way, they was over here. Based on the study of the scripture, John wrote and preached against the teaching about purgatory. Now if you had someone that probably wasn't saved would go into purgatory, you could buy their way out, but you had to pay the church. Mm -hmm. And there was sale of indulgence. You could pay to get your sin forgiven. And if it had not been for this man, we would all be in he started it. We'd all been in a Catholic church this morning doing mass, talking to people out of little wooden boxes, <laughs> asking, asking a man to forgive sin against God, which you can't do. That's right. That's right. But they practice it today. Yep. The self indulgence and the doctrine of transubstination. Basically, that's cannibalism because they believed it was the actual blood and the actual body of Jesus Christ that you had to take at the Lord's Supper. Now, there's something wrong with that. And baby baptism. Just take a baby up, like this little one here, baptize him. Oh, he's saved. Well, that's not what the Bible says. That's right. That's not what the Bible says. But poor old John. He had a stroke in uh, 1384, and uh, he was still trying to do God's work. December 31, 1384, he died, and he was buried. But 30 or 40 years later, the Pope was so angry with him, Pope Martin the V was so angry still at him after 30 or 40 years, they dug up his bones, burn them into ashes and they poured them into the the little there was a little stream there called Swift, a neighboring brook that run by heart. This brook went in, carried carried his ashes into the Avon, the Avon to the Sabrine, into the narrow sea, and then to the main ocean. And basically what this man done did was send John Whitecliffe bones all over the world, just like the Bible. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to head, jump ahead to 1603. A King James the Sixth of Scotland, or he was actually Prince James of Scotland, was in a Sunday service just like this. He did not care for the Bible they were using because the notes on the side of the Bible held him accountable. He, he assumed he was the vicar of God. He was the head of the church. So he didn't answer to anyone. But people like that, like me, did. So, the marginal notes held him up. So he decided to point some men. In 1604, there was a thing called the Hampton Court Convention. He invited, <coughs> excuse me, 54 learned me, men of the colleges that was in England. And he divided them up into six companies and, and the ones that could do the work of the Old Testament, do the Greek, do the Hebrew, uh, Aramaic. I hope that's right. But he divided them into six companies in these big universities or colleges. King James, he sent 15 rules for translating and what texts to be used. And in 1611, we got the King James Version of the Bible. That one right there. <coughs> but 
people has worked with our Bible. And in 1716, excuse me, 1769, Benjamin Blaney produced a Bible that we carry today. This is the Bible we carry. And like I say, it wasn't broke, it didn't need fixing. Mm -hmm. right. You see that today with everything. It's not broke, but we gotta fix it. Mm -hmm. People, people want to put their little two cents in this and let, and let, not let God take care of it. God will give us what I need. I've heard it said here this morning, our job is to present the gospel of Jesus Christ to lost and undone so that people might get saved Amen. and not have to spend eternity in hell. But in the in 1611 Bible, that one right there, it has it. There's a 39 Old Testament books, 14 of the Apocrypha, 27 New Testament books, Daily prayers is all listed right there. So, like I say, please be careful if you look at it. It was very expensive. I've had it for several years. So now we got where we started with our Bible. And this is a new one, and that's why I'm not flumbling through it because the pages are stuck together. And I can't yeah. get them open. <laughs> My other poor old Bible, I used it for the whole back side of it fell off. The mm -hmm. page falls out and it's just kind of laying up there. I don't put it up, it's laying there where I can use it. Once but in, in the Psalms, 12th chapter, verse 6 says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace, purified seven times. The more you cook silver, the purer it gets. Mm -hmm. The more you cook gold, the purer it gets. This right here. The more we use it, the more we try it, the purer it gets. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I'm learning, I'm learning. I love this thing. I love God's Word. Mm -hmm. And I love to read God's Word. And it has become very precious to me in the last year or so. But I'll tell you the last since 2020, we, we have been through a lot of struggles. I've been off the sick. I just almost wasn't here. And, and, and I thank people for the amount of prayers that have been put up to God Almighty. But I'm still able to stand here and proclaim His Word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. In Psalm 20, 26, it said, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace, purified seven times. Verse 7 says, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Gen <clears throat> we talked about generations in here last night, Christian Larry did. Mm -hmm. So some of <coughs> us real soon are going to go off the scene. We can't stop it. But we can teach these little ones so they can carry the word. Mm -hmm. Psalms 18 and 30 says, As for God, His ways are perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust Him. That buckler means a shield, a protector, a ruler. It's like the old gnarly back of a crocodile. It's pretty hard, they say. Then John chapter 20 verse 30 says, Speaking of Jesus, for many other signs did Jesus in excuse me, for many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ of the Son of the God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. That's our job, to present Jesus Christ to a lost and dying nation. And let me tell you something, people, we are terrible time in our nation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't see anything holding the Lord back and I don't see how he puts up with us as yeah. long as he has. Right. Right. Their main focus. And fussing and fighting over a word or two, the collar of the grapes, the way they hang, if they hang sideways or up and down, 
the collar of the chairs, the collar of the carpet. We shouldn't be arguing over stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it divides churches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. John 21, 25 says, There are also many other things which Jesus did, that which, if they should be written, everyone, I suppose, that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now the Bible we carry, our King James Version of the Bible, is just like Daniel. Daniel was thrown into a den of lions. I hear people quote, oh, he was thrown into a lion's den. I don't mean there's any lions in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a hole in the ground. But Daniel was put in a den of lions. Yeah. So as our Bible, it's been put in a den of criticism. They talk about it. Oh, it, there's mistakes in that Bible. And, that thing's so hard to read, I just can't understand it. Well, try a little harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. And what I've noticed about our Bible, it's been tested. It's been tried. That's right. But applied properly, it has always been correct. Now they, uh, back there was, they was, Back in the day when, 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 when John Wycliffe and those men, I'll mention them here in a minute if I've got time. They, the church would send out people to buy these so they could burn them. They would pile them up and burn them so the common people <coughs> could not get to them. And now since I'm jumping on things, I'm going to jump on another one. I'm going to jump on the NIV, New International Version. Mm -hmm. Matthew 17, 21. How be it goeth out but by prayer and fasting? It's not in the NIV. You'll find it in a little footnote down here. Or it's totally omitted. Matthew 23 and 14 says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour withered houses and for repentance, make long prayer, therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. It points people out. It calls them out. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, I don't, I don't want to hear that. So they removed it and they put a little footnote down here at the bottom. And I'll tell you this, I have an NIV. I've got several Bibles. It is hard to read. Mm -hmm. And they bunch all the verses together. They're not numbered like our Bible. They'll have 13, and 13 will show, or 14 will show up here. 15 will show up right here. Oh, where's that one? Oh. Spend time hunting for stuff rather than reading and studying. Mark 7, 16. If, any, if a man have ears, let him hear. Let him hear. They took it out. It's not there. That's why I'm so thankful. <clears throat> we have that book right there. That's right. You got five minutes, I run out of time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and, and I'll say this: the new, Inter the new International Version, the New American Standard, the New King James Version, the Rise Revised Standard, the New Revi the New Revised Standard, English Standard, and the New Century. But I want to get your. There's some more there. But I, I will read one thing here. I'm going to talk about John Wycliffe. I've done explain him. John Hush, he was burned at the stake. The fire that they started to burn to burn John Hush at the stake was fired. The kindling was John Wycliffe's manuscripts. John Collette started reading English for two and awkward. They didn't like it. William Tyndale, he was in jail for 500 days, strangled and burned at the stake. 1536. Martin Luther. Halloween, 1517, he nailed the 95 Thesis of Contentions to the, the door of the Catholic Church. We owe these men a great debt to the thankfulness that they fought to carry this down through here. We'll read two more verses and I'll be done. And all these Bibles, the ones I read, they're either omitted or a footnote. 
Mm -hmm. uh, running out of time. But anyhow, I'm going to read this one first. If you add to it, oh, here we go. I test Romans 22 and 18. And maybe I just didn't read this real good. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And 19 says, If any man shall take away the words of this book of prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in the, this book. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto everyone that trusts him. I thank you for your time and attention. I hope you learned something. King James Version of the Bible. Amen. These other ones are trying to get rid of it. I believe that's the devil and his working his heart to get rid of something that is absolutely true. Brother Mark.